Roberts. It's finals day for real this time. Platinum Singles Finals. The 2023 Western BCA 8 Ball Championship. Dave Randall versus Eric Sawyer. Eric Sawyer sitting in the hot seat. Must be beat twice. Dave Randall coming through the B side. This is true double elimination. So, yes, Eric must be beat twice. But if Eric, uh, if Eric beats David, then it's over. We are coming at you from the Chinook Winds Casino Resort here in beautiful Lincoln City, Oregon. Thank you to the Chinook Winds for everything you do for the Western BCA. It is greatly appreciated. We also appreciate everything that our fun day sponsors do. They, they put up some money so we can have some fun on the day before the tournament proper started. So be sure to show them some love too. Speaking of showing some love, next time you're in Seattle, go to Ox Billiards. Show them some love. Tom Albert sent you Seattle's premier billiard hall. Regular pool, Chinese eight ball, snooker. They got you covered. So. We are your hosts, Kevin and Sherry Ross. It's just me for a moment. Sherry will be along in just a minute or two. While we're waiting for this match to start, now would be a good time to hit that thumbs up. Give us a subscribe, too, if you are feeling so inclined. We'd appreciate it. Thanks. Let's go over the rules. We are playing CSI Rules 8-Ball. This is alternate break and rack your own. In CSI Rules 8-Ball, after the break, it is always open after the break, no matter what was pocketed. You do not have to take what you make. And also, the 8 on the break is neither a win nor a loss. This is a call ball and pocket game. Yep, you can't win on the break, you can't lose on the break. If the eight goes on the break, all its spots, and you have the option of uh, continuing to shoot or racking them up and breaking again. If you make the eight on the break and scratch, well, then it's your opponent that has that choice. All right, are we all caught up? Good. Looks like we're ready to get this match underway. Platinum single finals. All right, here we go. Dave Randall with the break. He's here till midnight or so last night playing a third place match. <clears throat> Up here, bright and early, nine a.m. to get started with the finals. I mean, who plays a who plays a pool finals at nine a.m.? That's just uncivilized. All right, looks like Dave has made a ball on the break. All right, what are we liking, solids or stripes? I don't know. They both have problems. Maybe stripes start with the, I mean, uh, I don't know. I was going to say start with the 413 combo, but you also have that uh, 12 in the side if you wanted stripes. All right, he's lining up on this three. He's going to take solids. Yeah, that one ball can uh, maybe break out that two, that two and four ball. He's going to have to stretch for this one. That's going to be, uh, he's using the one to get the breakout. It's going to be kind of difficult from here, especially having the stretch. He may try to just draw back a little bit and use the six. Except if you use the 6, you're going to be knocking balls kind of towards the 13, so that may not be as effective as a breakout.
All right, well, he played that off the 13 to move things around, but kind of tied up the 6 in the process, so that didn't quite work out the way he wanted. Is he going to try to get underneath these balls for a safety? Is that what he's looking at, or is he playing the combination? I can't tell. Okay, he's playing safe, just going to try to get underneath them. And he's done pretty well with that. All right, uh, looks like Eric has uh, given the hand signal for playing safe. Things are starting to get loosened up a little in this uh, safety battle we got going on down here. Yeah, I think you need to, if you're going to shoot this 13 up table, I think you need to scoot that cue ball to the right a little bit. If you, if you just kind of play like a stop shot or a small draw, Dave's going to have a shot of that six or four up to one of those upper right corners. I think you got to drag it over to the right just a smidge. Which is a little more than a scouse. Let's see if something else in mind. Let's see if something else in mind. He's looking he at. He may be just flat out moving the two. Looks like he's looking at kicking. He kicking can make, to 14. I think he's going to the 12, maybe the 14. The 12. If that makes the 7, that's a nice shot, at, especially if it rolls up on the back of this 10 here. Oh, well, that's a nice result. <laughs> wow, that's the kind of shot Efren would be proud of. For anybody. Actually, Efren would uh, would be bowing down to him. It's like, you're the master. Well, you're the that man, was, Eric. That's a that, pretty shot. That was uh, pretty sporty. Maybe a little lucky, too, but still a nice result. Yeah. Is anybody else al alive with us this morning? Got a few uh, pool uh, junkies out there. Morning, and Joe. <laughs> and Jesse. Well, let's see what Dave Randall has in mind. He's trying to put that nine over there, make things even funnier. But uh, that two has come around and it's going to leave him a nice shot to start with with this ball in hand. Oh, wait, we're on the stripes. <clears throat> I think yep. Dave was hoping the nine would get in a funny place where it wouldn't leave him break out and look. It's left him like perfect for, especially starting with ball in hand. Uh oh. 
It is nine o'clock in the morning. <laughs> so you're allowed one? You're yeah. allowed one that one is a nine AM match? You're allowed one of those at nine AM. Just gonna give this a nice gentle nudge, loosen it up a little. No. Yeah. Oh, don't hook yourself on it though. That would be unfortunate. He still got the two. Yeah, I'd have probably hit it, you know, a little bit, a little try to hit the thirteen a little thinner so that you slide off of it to shoot the four next. But that could just be my dream. <laughs> He's not going to hook himself, is he, on anything? No, he's fine. He's got it. Okay. He was in my way. I couldn't see where it went in relation to the 14. Just draw it back a little bit down the rail. It's a tiny bit of left, left draw to bring it towards the 8. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, good hang time there. Wow. The suspense was killing me. It was hanging ten for a second. Eight. Eight. Hanging eight. <laughs> Dave Randall takes that first game of the required 12 games if he wants to win this tournament. He does have to beat Eric twice. Eric's going to, or Eric, uh, I thought Dave was going to go get himself a drink, but, uh. At the bar, you mean, <laughs> or yeah, at the or the water? Oh, the water usually. I I don't I don't know him really well, but I don't ever recall seeing him drink. Brad Hornshaw here this morning. And how is that bar not open? We got pool players in here. Yeah, it's it open. They, 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 she told you the lady's name who's okay. over there, okay. and then she'll make you that Bloody Mary that you need this morning for that hair of the dog. We got pool players in here playing pool. We gotta have alcohol. It's nine a.m. Darn it! You're in a casino. You need people to drink so that they're a little bit frivol more fl frivolous with their money, even though you tell them yeah, gamble loose. responsibly. Yeah, loosen up their wallet a little. <laughs> yep. You do that through their mouth. <laughs> <laughs> There used to be a time when the Vegas casinos would give you free alcohol to loosen to loosen up your wallets, but uh, those days are long gone. Now it's eight dollars for a bottle of water. Well, I guess they uh, didn't have their score sheet, so That's they okay. went to go get the score sheet. Sorry, right, we're keeping score. We got it. You got gotcha. you. Brad Horn said to say I watched it as long as I could last night in a long uh, I watched on the live stream last night at least as long as I could hold my eye open. <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't sit down, Dave. It's your break. No, it's his shot. It's your your shot after the break. Yeah, he's just, he's just penciling in his win for the first game.
It's warm in this corner this morning. I think they had the heat on. Or maybe they turned the air off overnight. It's probably the bad boys. When they come in, they turn on the air conditioner. I could see Rick doing that, too. Or maybe it's Kobe. Maybe it's Kobe that does it. No, this is Kobe's first uh, year here, I think, or whatever. But when we were here before, it was still freezing. So I'm I'm blaming Rick. Okay. All right. Dave's taking solids, I think. So does he. He thinks so. <laughs> but he may have just changed his mind. Oh, solids are looking pretty good to me. Yeah, solids look good to me, too. Seven ball is the only uh, problem ball with the solids, and it's not that big a problem. Stripes don't have many problems either, except for that 10 ball. You mean the 12? Or 12 ball. Whatever that dark blue-ish colored one is. It's purple. Purple is blue-ish. And it is, uh, does have blue in it. You're, you're right. I learned that in school. Even though I went to school in Florida, they did teach us that red and blue makes purple. We'll be a little more lively after our second cup of coffee, or maybe our third, too, this morning, so give us a minute. <laughs> And it is going to be back to back to back to back to back to back until we get to those teams and <clears throat> not exactly sure. David was lining up something with the. Uh, why not shoot the six to the corner and just drift over for the seven in the same pocket? Is he playing it off the nine or something silly? And he's playing a combination. I mean, you can shoot the six to the corner, drift over for the seven in the same corner. Oh. I think he was uh, playing a billiard there on the seven. Which confuses me because why would you play the billiard on a seven when you just shoot the seven straight in? I don't know. I'm confused. Dave confuses me. Yeah, that's okay. He's another one of those guys, he sees all kinds of creative stuff, so yeah, it's like I was trying to figure out what Stan was going to do, and I just quit. I'm like, I, I'm not even going to try to get in this guy's head anymore, because <laughs> he sees things that I don't even know if Tony Chohan would say. Hmm. All right, Eric Sawyer at the table. He got on that uh, problem... Blueish ball, also known as the 12 ball. Took care of that problem right away. Uh, a little bit of a mistake there. I think he came up on the wrong side of that 10. Or well, anyway, he bumped it, which he definitely didn't want to bump it. So plan B, shoot to 13. Yeah. Shoot to 13, you draw it back. Are you going to the 14, a little bit for the 14, or more for the 15 to get to the 10? To go to the 15, the 10, then the um, the 14? If I play until after midnight, it takes me three days to recover. <laughs> and uh, Dave said he was having a little stomach problems early this morning, too. Like waking him up at 5 a.m. Yeah, that's what he was thinking. <clears throat> Just drop back a little bit. That 15 gives you the line to get to the 10. And you gotta be so you need to get to the other side of the you need to be on the right hand side of the ten ball so that you've got the angle to pull the cue ball back for that fourteen. If you you know, if you aren't at least where the six is or even a little bit further, you don't have the right angle to get there. Just like that. That's perfect. 
Yeah, he's looks like he's dead straight on this. Uh oh. Gonna have to draw to that left side of the table for the t uh, fourteen in that right side pocket. Does it go past the one? Looks like it. He's going forward with it. He must not have all that. He must not be completely straight if he's going oh, okay. forward. Maybe he can go two rails around the five. Oh, okay. He, no problem. He was just fine all along. Uh, yes, he did uh, wire all the lights, but he didn't do that last night while playing the tournament. No, he did that a uh, long time ago. Now that would have probably been done Thursday. All right, nice shot there. Eric ties it up, one apiece. The race to six. When you're in saddle, check out Ox Billiards. Well, the singles have uh, seven uh, divisions based on your Fargo rate from uh, bronze one, bronze two, silver one, silver two, gold, platinum, and elite. The elite had a couple of 700 Fargo players in the finals. I don't know if they put a cap of 725 like uh, BCA Worlds does. I'm not sure if they do that here. Probably not because there's nobody in the Pacific Northwest with the Fargo rate over 725. Yeah, if he has a look at this 13 to the corner, now would be a good time. Otherwise, uh, yeah, I think he might have to shoot this 14, try to draw back to near that foot spot to try to get a better line on this 13 to the side. Looks like he's going to follow to the 15, shoot the 15 on the right side and follow across for the 13. Oh, no, he confuses me. He fooled me with the way he was uh, stroking that. If he's straight in, he can just roll forward, take the longer cut on the 8. He doesn't have to do anything too too crazy here. He can just roll forward to right around there if he's straight. If he can come off the rail, then even better. Oh, he did have a little bit of angle. Don't go too far. That There's a 5 ball there. So yes, this is true double elimination.
Eric. So, sorry, as I was saying, Eric sitting in the hot seat, must be beat twice, drew double elimination, Dave Randall. All right, Eric Sawyer with the break. So I believe that was a break and run by Dave. So. Being up uh, playing late doesn't seem to have negatively affected him too much for this 9 a.m. match. So, as I said, this is the Platinum Singles Finals. Winner walks out with a cool $1,240. Second place, $855. So it's a, about a $400 match, roughly, that they're playing here. And uh, bragging rights for winner. And a plaque, right? Uh, actually, they both get plaques now. They've been doing that for a little while. Second place gets plaques? Second place gets plaques. It used to be only first place would get them. As it should be. All right, Dave to the table. We're just feathering off this ball, sending the cue ball up table. And he's going to leave him straight in on that 13. Yeah. That's not too terrible. Because uh, how do you get anywhere from being... Actually, it does have a little bit of angle. Isn't that 13 off the rail just a little bit and the cue ball is on the rail? Or am I seeing things? No, you're seeing it right. It has the tiniest bit of angle here. Yeah, it's looking like if he could go forward and cut that 14 up in the corner. Well, I think it has a window if he can get that cue ball over there. Well, uh oh, I think he's uh, put it into a little more trouble. Although with the 13 being off, he does, uh, does have a little bit more uh, room to work with for getting uh, broke out.
All right, Dave's asking the ref to uh, remove the rack. Yeah, can we get rid of that rack, please? And it is uh, the Mez rack. I was looking, you know, it, it is called the Turtle rack, but it's from Mez. And that would be Bill Doherty out there. Can we just get money on PayPal? <laughs> you could turn the thing all kinds of different ways, and look at that. What a pro. That guy's a pro. Well, he gets paid the big bucks. To, to volunteer to be a ref. They don't volunteer. They get paid. <laughs> it's almost a volunteer thing, but they do get paid. <laughs> and they get a hotel room. Ah, forget participation trophies. He'd be happy with a participation ribbon. <laughs> They're trying to figure out this puzzle. I think he has a shot on the seven to the corner, but it might just be... Just a little black. Looks like he's just going to play another safe. I then off to three and try to come back over to where he is right now, or a little, even a little bit higher. Is he going to try something crafty and try to get like behind the five, use an eight ball to stop the cue ball, something, something well, crafty like that? But the ten's right there. Yeah, I like that. That's the was the you know, the the shot I was gonna try. Yeah, I would be trying to execute if I was out there. Not a whole lot to do. Just try to keep him from being able to run out on you. He's got his stuff a little bit more open. Haha, <laughs> your bank receipt is your uh, participation ribbon. All pin right. It, pin it to your chest and wear it proud. I don't know, do you even go for this bank? Are we playing another safe? Knock the 13 up near the cluster for potential breakout? I don't know. That's where he just called the gun on it. Well, can he cut it thin and send the cue ball into that stack? And that's what I'm wondering. Because I swore he just called the gun on this. No, he is not sending the cue ball into the stack. He's going to here try to two rails into the back of it. Looks like he has the angle to do that if he wants. Does it go on the side? Or up in the corner? Does he think it goes on the side? Well, 
That's where he's calling it. I mean, the seven's in the way. He's going to have to play a billiard off the three, three, it looks like. That's, like, really thin off of it, as high as that three is of the side pocket. It's almost a full diamond above it. And be that, a heck of a shot if he makes it. Yeah, he just called safe. Okay, he thought better. He came to his senses. Yeah, well, I'm looking at, you know, even if you try to play it off the three, and the three hits the five, and where's the five headed? And Dave's just going to come off the side of this seven and try and leave him up underneath the one ball, you think? You've got the one, three, five, eight, it's all his blockers. <clears throat> Yeah, Dave has lots of options for playing safe. Lots of balls Dave can hide behind, and Eric only has the one, so he's at a distinct disadvantage now. Dave has all the advantage now. Well, you got to hit that ball, Dave. Yeah, well, at least the 14 doesn't go anywhere. Maybe that's part of his diabolical plan. Let him see it. Hmm. The tables are breaking in. I mean, the table tables are definitely running slower than they uh, than they were at the beginning of the tournament. Yes, they are. They were pretty darn quick at the beginning of the tournament. They're slowed down nicely. Well, it's warmed up outside too by about. 15, 20 degrees, and I mean, I'm not getting shocked anymore like I was every time I touched that rail over there for a couple of days. <clears throat> so the air is a little bit wetter, too. And the tables have broken some. He's, I think he was trying to, he wanted them oh. up in on that 6-4. Yeah, but you don't want to put your, your one and only ball on the end rail where it's completely out of play. Yeah. You're not putting any pressure on your opponent and, at and, all by doing that. And Dave Randall is not going to make some kind of silly mistake to put you on it. It would have to be like something weird happen and bump off a ball or whatever, you know, for it to come anywhere near leaving you a shot. If he doesn't run out on you now. How many tables? I think there was 74? 74. 74 tables. Yeah, it used to be 80. It used to be six across the hall, but they have turned those into offices for different areas of the casino. And I think last tournament or the tournament before, it was the smoking room. And now they have moved all smoking completely out of the casino. Yeah, Dave can just pick these off in whatever order is most convenient. Gonna go the two, the one, and then um, the three and the seven, or the seven three, whatever he's. Uh, he may even leave that one go um, off to the. Uh, he's coming over for it right now. They may leave the one as his out ball, but I think here it's all just about where you end up because any of these, you know, any pattern of here works. Pretty much, right? Yeah. And you can see how quickly that cue ball came to a stop. You know, a few days ago, that would have kept on going a couple more rails.
Yeah, I think we, uh, go, or he's looking at going out to the three from there. So that he can just roll forward for the eight on the other side, it looks like. Shoot the seven, slide over for the three in the side. That's just, you know, the, where he was just looking at. Well, it's not getting there. Yeah, so if you're listening to this, you were playing this week, at, this last week. Um, yeah, hit the ball harder today. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not, I can't tell if you can avoid brushing that eight or not. Uh, I'd shoot it up in the corner here. Just, you know. I'd, I don't know, I'd probably draw into the eight before shooting it to the corner, just uh, because I don't want to miss the three. No, yeah, I'm not missing the three, shoot it to the corner. <laughs> yeah, he drew into the into the eight and uh he ended up okay on it. Yeah. And I heard uh, Summerfield say last night that uh The best uh, Dave Randall has done here, second place. I guess uh, a few years back, he lost to Daniel Sarancillo in the finals. So, no shame in losing to Daniel. He's a pretty good shooter. Yep. I'm surprised he's not here. But then I saw he was doing some snooker um, uh, matchup at uh, Ox, but I think that's next week. But yeah, I was really surprised that uh, he wasn't here. Well, it does cost a bit of money to come down here for a week. Yep. Dave Randall, three to one. Race to six. If Dave wins this set, I have to flip a coin, do it all over to again. Do it all over again. Yeehaw. I think the chat has taken the Colin Dave final clause. <laughs> Stacy Moses is still motoring through. I wasn't sure if that was second chance or was it second chance? Nope. Silver two singles final bracket. Go Stacy. Dry break from Dave brings Eric Sawyer to the table. Pretty wide open break too. Which is unusual for a second ball break to get such a wide open break. That is for fifth, sixth. Right on. Get him, Stacy. Eric opting for solids. Can't say that I blame him. All right, looks like he's got pretty good on the six. I don't think he's 
frozen to that 12. I think he's got to look at the 6. Oh, yeah, you can see that 6. He's in good shape. Big question is the the 2 and the 8. That's, those are the big mysteries for this rack. So where are we playing the 8, and how are we getting to it? Yeah. yeah so this is finals number 2 of the 7 divisions. So there are 5 more after this to go through today. Yep, we had the Elite Singles Finals yesterday. Guest commentary with Scott Frost. You can check that out on our channel. I just got to get rid of that two now because you want to want to use one of these two balls down here to get on the eight, don't you? Yeah, uh, I think he was going to use the two ball. If he can get the cue ball around where it is now, then he can play the two, come around for the eight, either in the same pocket as the two or even the, the eight in the upper left corner on screen. I think he's saving the two for his cue ball to the eight. Yeah, I don't like that. There's so little room there. You have to get oh, to... Man. This made things a lot more complicated. Yeah. I think he almost got to be on the side rail to shoot the two and get around to the eight. There's not a whole lot of alley there to have the other side of the ball to go forward a couple of rails. Because the two's off the rail by almost a ball. Well, that's perfect from where he was and yeah, on the rail. Yeah, this is perfect angle. One rail up, eight in the same pocket as the two. He just wishes he was four feet closer to it. That would help. <laughs> well, and the closer you get, the more that angle is, too. So it gives you a little bit more to work with to come around. And he's got to hit this with a decent amount of speed. There we go. And that is a decent amount of speed. Yep. That looks pretty darn good to me. Yeah, makes that ball, you know, missable, too, when you're having to play it with that, you know, a little harder. Makes that ball where you can rattle it. And he, But he didn't, straight in. Good morning, Wired Space. Good morning, Jeff. There we go, on the board it is Eric Sawyer. Yeah, doubles his score. Trails by one, three to two. Race to six. True double elimination. Eric sitting in the hot seat. Must be beat twice. Eric says, forget this beat twice stuff. Let's just let's just finish this in one set. Yeah. Yeah, he did. He uh, picked his way through that uh, pretty nicely. Wow, I can't believe we have so many people watching at night at a 9 a.m. match. There must be a bunch of East Coast people. Yeah, right. Watching on their lunch break. Nice. Yeah. Speaking of uh, breaks, that's a nice break by Eric there. All right, solids or stripes. Either one could work. I'm looking at that 12 and 2 ball. Like the 2 goes, but the 12 doesn't, I think. That might be the deciding factor. The rest of the solids all go. 
The rest of the stripes I'll go. Not East Coast, just a pool degenerate. I hear you. Well, thanks for tuning in. Glad to have you. You're among family here. Yeah, well, we know Jesse and uh, and Jeff are West Coasters. Yeah, and Joe Bly from Nevada. We watch because we care. Aw. Oh, shucks. All right, he's going after this 12 now. I don't know if the, I don't know that it goes straight in. Is he playing some type of uh billiard or is he trying to draw this to push it through the two a little but it went straight in i didn't think it had room to go well unfortunately he didn't quite get that cue ball where he wanted i think his only shot now is the 15 and then even if you shoot the 15 where's that cue ball going nowhere good the 10 doesn't bank, the 8's in the way. Can't see the 14. He is in trouble. Well, hope to see you next year, Adam. Come on down, it's lots of fun. Except for the 9 a.m. finals. That's not a whole lot of fun, but hey, at least you're in the finals, so that part's fun. All right, he got himself a look at that 10, and oh, man. Dead straight on this. You have to just shoot a stop shot and cut the 14. That's what he's looking at. Man. All right, going to try to get through this 14. And he's still got to play position on the 8. Man, he is uh, up against it. He's come with some good shots already. Got to keep him coming, though. And I got to say, Eric, uh, if you're on our TV table ever again, don't wear a striped shirt. <laughs> oh, I hope that eight passes the two, but no, I don't think it does. All right, yeah, he's back cutting this to that right corner. Man, if he makes this eight, that'll be one heck of a run out. Definitely not making it easy. Center of the pocket. Where's that cue ball going? Nowhere. Wow, what a great run out. Three, three. Tough shot after tough shot. Nice shooting there, Eric. Yeah, 
All right, so we're going to have Dave Randall with the break. All right, guys, sorry about that. Uh, dealing with a little technical thing. It looks like he's uh, going to like to drop this ball in the side pocket, running into the two. Oh, and the two goes and not the four. Dang. Yeah, that's when you kind of just stroll away like he just did there, kind of looking up a little bit like, well, what do you do? All right, we got Dave at the table. What do we got here? Is Dave uh, solids or stripes? All right, Dave is stripes. And yeah, stripes are wide open too. Yeah, ten ball is can be just a little tricky to get to because both side pockets are blocked, so you gotta shoot the ten to, you know, one of the corners. He should shoot the plaids. Well stripes are close to stripes are close to plaid. Plaid is just stripes in two directions, right? So he's doing the best he can. He's shooting plaids. All right, well, he's on the 10. He could shoot that 10 now if he wants. He could even shoot the 11. He has choices. I kind of like taking care of that 10 because that 10 is kind of out there. I'm not going to say no man's land, but it's kind of kind of tricky to play position on, and he's on it now. I think now would be a good time to take care of that 10. But as we've seen, Dave does approach the game in his own way.
He's also straight in on this 11. He might want to take care of this 11 first, and that is what he's looking at. So apparently for those uh, two rounds where there's the overlap, we're supposed to pick which match. Okay, pick one. Uh, I don't even know. I'm just irritated right now. If he was going to the nine, he needed to hit that. <laughs> I think he's straight on the 10, though, where he can shoot and stop, and he is off the rail a little bit so he can cue into his cue ball. Yeah, if he makes his 10, then he's in good shape, as long as he doesn't let the cue ball get away. And he did not. Nicely done. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's looking at that uh, half pocket past the four. What about the uh, half pocket past the five? <laughs> <laughs> well, if I'm shooting to a half a pocket, I'm going to shoot at the one that's closer. Yeah, and I don't think he even has half a pocket past the five. <laughs> I mean, you can just drop past the eight and shoot to the shoot to a full pocket. No, we just nice, to the perfect. Side. Nicely done. All right. One step closer to that second set. And Eric says, yeah, now we're going to stop this dance right here. Yeah, we got a battle going on here. A little back and forth. Which kind of agrees with the Fargo rates. Fargo rates says this is going to be a close match, and it is a close match. Just what we like to see in the finals. Nice close match. All right, nice break by Eric. Good spread, he's made a ball. I mean, because the two stripes are hanging in the corners, that kind of says we should go with stripes.
All right, he is going with the stripes. Okay, shooting the 11 in the side. And is he going to make the 15 too? Nope. Shoo! <laughs> that could have been trouble if he would have pocketed that ball. Right? Yeah, he need that now. Yeah, now the uh, 10 ball is a problem. He might be able to play the 10-14 combo. I can't tell if that's open. It looks like the 10-14 combo might be open. Or just 10 in the corner once the 14 has gone. I mean, I think that 10 only has one pocket, which is, you know, where the 14 is. But I think that, com I think he has room to make the combo. Uh, no, they did not lag. They uh, they flipped a coin. He's drawing it back for this combination. Does he have to hit this rail first with the? Because I can't tell if the two's in the way where he can shoot straight at it, or if he has to go rail first with the ten. I think he can shoot straight at it. If, if he has to go rail first, that can get real dicey. He does have to go rail first, and he's missed it. Well, I think the real first two is uh, giving him a shot on the one or on the ten ball afterwards, or maybe you know if you play you don't play it real first, maybe you get something funny. I don't know, but I, it, it looked to me like he didn't have enough room to shoot it straight at it. Yeah, it was really hard <clears throat> to tell, but yeah, obviously he didn't because he had to go real first. But you know he's left this tough for Dave. You know, got these solids. You know the stripes are blocking some of these solids down here. Dave's got some work to do. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me to see Dave pocket this 14 and play safe. And that is, well, how, he might be shooting the 7 in the side, but it wouldn't surprise me to see him pocket this to play safe. I think it's what he's looking at. Like he just looked at it to shoot it past the uh, 5. Oh, day. A five's out far enough where this ten doesn't bank, right? Um, I can't say with a hundred percent certainty that the ten doesn't bank. So there's a possibility that that ten banks. And if it does, I'd be, <laughs> I'd be shooting it. Oh, absolutely. He tried it, just banked it just a little wide, but look what he's done to Dave's... Oh, wow, look what he's done to almost all of Dave's solids. Yeah, but, you know, Dave can 
play him safe here again, uh, you know, from just put him in the back. Do you like just pushing the seven ball up a little bit or just nudge the three and maybe line up that three, four, seven a little better or even the three, four and just leave him on the rail here? I mean, I like opening these up while playing safe. Dave is usually perfectly happy leaving everything all clustered together. Yeah, well, I don't know how you can uh, open them all up. Oh, well, I like that. That works nice if you can do that. Yep. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you could hit it, you know, hard enough to get those to move out well. And uh, he was able to. I think you got to look at this three rails out of that corner. Like you're trying to shoot a four railer here with the cue ball. And it should run right into the ten, right? Yeah, he's uh, he's got him pretty good here. It's got them in there good. Three, four. He's got a hit, but no rail. No rail. No rail yet. Yeah. No rail. But he has left the 12 in a good spot, at least, should he come to the table again. Yeah, well, I think Dave is, uh, I was going to say maybe he'll move it here, but if he moves that 10, um, then the, they could get the 5 in trouble. Can we turn the light a little bit? I can't even see now. Wired Space says shoot the four. I'm not a huge fan of the four. If you can move that ten out of the way, then you can shoot the three, shoot the five, shoot the four in this bottom corner. I can drag from the three and bump the four out too here, if he's got a, if he's straight enough on it. He may play play the six in the side off of the ten too, opening up a little bit more. Because it looks like he's going forward here. All right, I think we may see uh, Dave just uh, nudge this four ball here. Just tap the four, tap the four up in front of the side, leave him hooked. Oh no, he's hit it too hard. Yeah, that's going to leave a mark, I think, on the other side of the scoreboard. Perfect. Four, four. We are neck and neck, just like Fargo Eight uh, predicted.
You are watching the finals of the Platinum Singles here at the Western BCA 8-Ball Championship. We are your hosts, Kevin and Sherry Ross. Dave Randall at the table with the break. He's made a ball, made a couple balls. And, yeah, stripes are looking real good, this rack. This could go 5-4 real quick. Okay, maybe not real quick. It looks like he has a little bit of angle on this 14. Maybe bump to 7 to leave you straight in on the 15 to the side. Roll forward. Yeah, unfortunately he's left it kind of frozen to the 7, so it does hamper his queuing a little bit. You don't want to end up on top of this 13. That would be bad. And does he have a shot? He can swerve around this 8 to make that uh, 12 in the side if he can't see it straight. All right, someone decided to shine the spotlight straight at us, so I had to uh, put up some blinds. All right. One um, one, uh, one problem averted this morning. All right. So he does, uh, he's decided to take on this 13. Didn't want to try to swerve around the 8 for that 12. If you're looking at it, looking at it from this angle, that looks like a pretty severe swerve around the 8. So 13 is probably the better choice. Does it have enough gas it to get does, there? It does, just. Oh, man, but this cue ball is... Uh... Yeah, you go to the uh, shoot the nine and get to the... between the two eight. Has he got the angle to do that, or just roll it to the other side and uh, take the cut on the 12? Roll this nine in and get over to between, like, the diamond and... If there would be nice. Yeah, down down at this end of the table is where I want the cue ball. Yeah, if he if he can get the cue ball down there, yeah, that's where I'd be going. Catching that gap between the eight two. What can I see to read this? Oh, Eric springs out of his chair. Yeah. <clears throat> no, that takes away a seat for people. They don't get to sit on the edge of our uh, our podium there. Sorry. All right, so, yeah, got to deal with this cluster. I mean, if you can get down low on this 7 and uh, send the cue ball into that cluster, that might work. Uh, 2 in the side off the 12 might open things up a little. All 
And actually, you might be able to shoot the three straight in from here. If you can shoot that three straight in and just kind of nudge that 12 a little bit, I think that I think that opens this up real nicely. Oh, and he's left this straight in for Dave, although awfully close to his work and kind of the wrong angle. Cue ball's going to be going over behind, like towards that 12. But Dave is just happy to be at the table. Oh, can he see the 9? If he can see the 9, then that is definitely the way to go. Dave Randall on the hill, first set, 5-4 in this race to six. This is true double elimination. If Dave Randall wins this set, well, we got to flip the coin and do it all over again because Eric Sawyer sitting in the hot seat, must be beat twice. Be sure to support our Fun Day sponsors. They were nice enough to put up some money so we can have a little bit of fun on the day before the tournament. CSI, Big Little Box, Legends, Side Pocket, Linex Protective Coatings, Zero City Billiards Club, Jam Up Apparel, Players of Kennewick, Players of Everett, Savage Billiards, The Trough, Striker Fishing Rods, and us, Railbirds. And when you are in Seattle, check out Ox Billiards, Seattle's premier billiard hall. Chinese eight ball, snooker, or just regular pool. They got you covered. All right, so not the nice wide open uh, rack we've been coming to uh, look forward to.
Then he's taking solids. He's going to try to, well, I was going to say he's going to try to open these up, but not at that speed. You're not opening them up. All right, looks like Dave is uh, calling for a ref, but probably because he wants to have the rack removed. Hey, I, uh, I did that once already. So what happened? Did they uh, bump the balls? No. Oh. He knows the placement, just not which one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that looks about right so far. All right, here we go. Everything all put back together. I got to say, I, I don't understand that shot.
All right. Uh, what are we doing here? All right, just kind of moving that five ball out for a potential breakout on the four while leaving your opponent not much at all. All right, not a bad little shot. Brings Eric to the table, looking at uh, looking at not much. And it gives the head a little bit of a scratch. Yeah, that's kind of what I'd be doing too. Yeah, this is a bit of a tough spot. <clears throat> All right, looks like Eric just wants to free up this uh, this fifteen. Ideally, bring the cue ball back to this bottom of the rail. He wants to leave him on the five, but he's let Dave see. He's let Dave see his solids. Dave's still got a lot of work to do, though. Not an easy run out here. Yeah, premium member said cut the 10, make the 2. I was looking at trying to find some way to pocket that 2 while playing safe because I just kind of wanted to pocket that 2. Couldn't really find a way to do it while also playing safe. Three ball <clears throat> still tied up. Five ball is a possible breakup ball in the three, but you kind of have to have the cue ball like right where that 10 is, really. Hey, Snooker. Good morning. And did he come up short? Oh, he's come up short. Oh, no. Oh, no. All right, this is just what uh, Eric's been waiting for. All right. 
then it looks. All right, so Eric, ball in hand, just what the doctor ordered. It's going to start with this nine just to kind of loosen up this little trio of balls here. I mean, he doesn't have to move anything because, so, you know, the the 12 goes to the other corner or even to the side if he wanted. Looks like he was playing for the 10. I'm going to try to open up that 14 next maybe or try to open it up from the 13. Yeah, the 15 gets him to the 12. So I think he's looking at like going like kind of clockwise around the table here. Oh no, he was playing for an angle on the 13 to break out that 14 and he's just overdrawn it. All right, plan B. Yeah, fortunately, you still got that 15. Yep, fortunately. Uh, well, well, I, I think the three goes still over to this other corner. To the right corner on screen, you mean, or do you mean the bottom right? Yeah. Yeah, you don't mean past the twelve. No, it does not pass the twelve. Yeah, I think you are correct. I think it does. I think there's room to get a cue ball back there to shoot the three to the bottom yeah, right and, corner on screen. And the five can get you there, but it's like, is Dave looking at it right now? This guy, something you, you can't even begin to try to imagine what he is. He's playing safe. He's just rolling this three up on the twelve. It looks like. Uh, match for uh, table 10 uh, supposed to be underway um, for the third match for third for the gold singles. That's uh, supposed to be a 1030 match. Yeah, it has not started. Yeah. They're still waiting on. Uh, Do we know who the players are? We're we waiting on a player. Well, uh, Tyler Shields is waiting on an opponent. Okay. Thomas Hale or Douglas Nash. So they're right down there on table four or five. You said that's gold. That is gold. And the one player we do have was Tyler, Tyler Shields. Shields. Gold is raised to five. It is. All right. Far going. All right, nice safety there by Eric as cut off Dave from all of his solids. Wait, does he have a window to that three? I mean, not that it does him much good, but at least he doesn't have to kick. He has a little window to that three. doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, he can see the three, but, you know, he doesn't want to shoot it because, you know, it doesn't really do anything productive. So he's looking for something a little bit more productive than just rolling up on the three. But that might be all you got. Oh, I was far going in.
Oh well. Yeah, Dave doesn't play with a shot clock. He plays with a shot calendar. All right, he's uh, he's going for a shot. I think he called the floor in the side. I think I just saw him uh, indicate. That's uh, very aggressive. What are we doing? Are we kicking at something? You know, he's kicking at the four in the side. Um, and they were talking about, uh, Eric was saying, I think we should get a ref. And Dave says, I'll just let you call it. I guess he trusts Eric more than the ref, I guess. All right, nothing to call there. That was a pretty easy call. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd argue there. Hey, no, man, you didn't have a ref. I say it's a good <laughs> hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shoot, goes to the joking, shooter. Joking with him, of course, right. Even with ball in hand, you know, got some uh, got some work to do here. Got multiple clusters here to deal with. Yeah, I'm trying to get something down there to um, for getting that twelve out. Play him safe. Uh, which ball do you use? Do you maybe bank the uh, fifteen up there? That's and, exactly and, what I was looking at. And bank. leave him on the thirteen, on the back side of the thirteen. That's exactly what I was just looking at. Bank the yeah, move the fifteen to this bottom rail, leaving them locked to the back of the thirteen. You know, that 15 is a potential breakout ball on this three ball later. Yeah, I need like three ball in hands to run out here. I One ball in hands is not doing it for me. <coughs> now, I need at least two. Like a, I, I need yeah a minimum of two ball in hands here. Wait, does that mean you take two cue balls and put them both out there at the same time wherever you want them? No, I don't know. He's playing uh, safe. I think right. he's he's doing he our doing, shot. Is he doing the fifteen ball? Of course he is. And you want to you know hit that into the side rail, you know so you, you don't want it you know straight at the end rail. I want it at the side rail and then to the end rail and off a little bit. Or Yeah, I mean, that was a shot that, that we saw. I mean, I'm sure there was other things uh, we could have done. But... And now there's a three ball combination there. Yep. Stripes go, but solids do not. Dave Randall's like, hey, he's crafty too. You should have seen the smile he had there. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'd have played it like that too. Oh, is Dave going to take another shot at this four ball? Well, I think we finally have an opponent. Woohoo. And it doesn't look like they went and grabbed the score sheet. They just won and moved over here. Let's see, can I refresh the bracket here without it going back to everyone? Here we go, Thomas Hale. Now, do you see H A I L? H A L E. H A L E. All right, so we're gonna have a match starting on our bonus coverage. That's gonna be uh, the gold singles. Is that a uh, the third. third place match? Yep. Alrighty. Thomas Hale is a 560 from Spokane. From Spokane, Washington.
All right, stream is live. Started out right with a uh, ox billiards. Got to get the got to get the music going. Got to get got to get everyone pumped up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think Dave's just gonna roll this five up in front of the twelve. Oh, here we. So while I was getting that other stream, <clears throat> while I was getting that other stream going, what happened? Did Dave kick the four in? Dave says he was playing safe. Well, you got to call safe, Dave. You can't shoot a ball at a hole like that. And then that. say I was playing and safe. And say I was playing safe. You have to call safe first when you're doing that. Otherwise, it's it's an obvious shot at the hole. Right? That's what uh, that's what that's what I'd be arguing to the ref. Yeah. So to answer my question, yes, Dave kicked this four in while uh, we were setting up that other stream. Wow. And that was a. Darn nice shot there, Dave. No, he gave him another swing at it. <laughs> he yeah, got he, dial he got dialed in. Yep, exactly right. So that is Tyler at the table over there now, just so okay. you know. Backwards baseball cap is Tyler. Yeah, got and it. he's not allowed to wear his hat like that when he's playing. It's absolutely against the rules. We don't have much of a dress code here, but we do have a dress code of some sort. Yep. Like, you must be wearing clothes and you can't wear your baseball cap backwards. No no stocking caps. Uh, not supposed to be wearing athletic or warm-up wear. Um, no sweatpants? Not supposed to be wearing sweatpants. I wish they had that dress code at Derby City. They uh, actually, Joe Town, had to go to the um, to the outlet mall yesterday to buy more pants because he got in trouble for wearing sweatpants. He got He got a warning. And I've seen, I can't tell you how many people this weekend wearing sweat, this week wearing sweats out there. Even crop sweats <laughs> that are, you know, like capris and stuff. Yeah. All right, Dave taking an intentional foul. Should have asked her what company she was using. All right, so Dave back at the table with a sliver of a shot at this seven. Is he going to get a rail? He's not getting a rail. I don't see a rail in the future of that ball. Well, Got to get a rail. Uh, Stacy got uh, fifth place. That's not bad. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, right. Yeah, this is probably where I'd be starting with the ball in hand, try to knock that seven out of there. All right, successfully moved that seven. And yeah, I think he's going to be shooting a seven next. Come up, just draw a little bit for whatever that ball's in the middle of the table. 11 in the side, roll forward. I got a hold of that one. <clears throat> well, he won't be shooting 11 in the side. He has the 14 in the corner, which might have been what he was playing position on the whole time. Does the 11 go through the 7-3? Um, it looks to me like that 7's in the way. Not the way he's going after this, I would assume the uh, 7 is in the way. Yeah. Okay. Eight ball is a pretty big ball here. I think I just stop it short of the eight and cut it. If unless he does have the angle to push forward to the rail there, I might, you know. I don't want to get stuck. Give Dave Randall another shot at the table to make this go to a second set. Yeah, this does look risky to try to go forward. Because he's not straight in on 13. He's, you know, got to cut the 13 a little. Yeah, then I'm just shop I'm stopping and I ain't going forward here. That eight ball is huge. And if I do go forward, I'm probably spinning it with a whole bunch of English. Uh, man, that is close. Yeah. He doesn't look too uh, concerned, so I think he got it. I think he got there. Okay, good. I was concerned for him. He didn't have to be. Wait a minute. What hit the eight ball? The 11 or the Q? Okay, the eight ball's still there after that. So the cue ball came back at it. He drew it at it. Yes. All right, brings Dave Randall to the table. Three balls away from taking us to a second set. Perfect. No, that's where he's wanting to get. The shoot the eight in the side. Did you see where he pointed his cue? Yeah, he's uh, planning on taking that cue ball all the way up table. Eight in the side. He just doesn't want to take any chance of uh, getting behind that 11. Yeah. You know, if you play position to that upper left corner, he's worried about if he's not precise enough, he can be behind the 11. So he just wants to go all the way past it and take that completely out of the equation. Okay, then. There you go. And there you have it. Or you will. At least I'm uh, I'm thinking that's uh, that's his thinking. Yeah, well, I would imagine. He's got to really run through this ball to get down there. Yeah, he does. Then he decided, yeah. nope, we're just coming one rail right back at it. <laughs> yeah, he changed his mind. <laughs> he thought better. I think this was his plan the whole time. He only put this cue stick out there and pointed to the side just to troll the, the commentators. Oh, right. He's like that. He really is. He's the prankster, he is. Flannel claws. This eight ball to go to a second set. Flannel claws, that's just awesome. I love it. <laughs> I love our viewers. <clears throat> All right. Wish. That two coming up shortly. 
Yeah, I'm, uh, I don't know if players are going to take a quick break or uh, if they're going to start right away. I imagine Eric's going to want to take a little break. Most likely going to take a Well, and break. they do need to take this score sheet up, and turn it in, and sheet. get a new score sheet and everything. And Dave should be doing that while Eric is running to the restroom. All right, so we are going to a second set after a short player break. So stick around. We will be right back.
All right, here we go. The Platinum Singles Finals, set number two. The final finals. The final finals for the, the platinum. platinum Singles. It's the grand finale. It's the grand final. Get your streaming buddy. I got my streaming buddy right here. Me too. She, she's really cute, too. Yeah. And crabby today. <laughs> All right. The head banging will get me through it. It usually does. Thank Ox for the commercial, too, for giving me a little light in my day. <laughs> we like that Ox Billiards commercial. Yes, we, we, like, we, we, like, we like to do the head banging every time we play it. Mm -hmm. It's fun. And I'm sure a video of that will, will appear on Facebook somewhere of us up here doing some head banging. If it hasn't already. Right. I said Andy, well, not both of us, but Andy Camping did a, a picture, a little video the other day of me <laughs> banging my head, do it. For all the pickles? Well, that's a lot of pickles. I don't know what you're going to do with all the pickles. It's for the cheddar. <laughs> Thriller versus Welcome to the Jungle. Alrighty. Playing for the cheese and the soup. The bread. And the bread. Playing for the bread. Do and the cheese. Rain me. All right. So Eric made ball on the break. Got a not the worst spread I've seen. I've seen much worse. Opting for stripes. I'm wondering, does that 15 pass the four to the corner once the 14 is gone? Well, he's going to nudge it right now, so... Okay, well, the 15... He may shoot the 15 now to the side. Maybe try to draw into that 2-ball to help hold up his cue ball. All right, 15 on the side. Double checking his angle. Double, triple. He's overcut it. Is it going to fall anyway? Nope. nope. And he did not draw into it until he shot that with a level Q. All right, brings Dave. Flannel, Cla Flannel Claws Randall to the table, <laughs> looking at solids. Sorry, Dave, that uh, that nickname is going to stick now. I have, I have a feeling. Forever and ever. Dave looking at a five to the corner. This two ball. Yeah, he's gonna have to find a way to bump that two ball off the rail. The four ball is blocked by the fourteen. The seven ball might move that fourteen out of the way if he can get down on it.
I mean, I think you got to try to get, you know, you got to get this cue ball down near like this foot spot to uh, cut the seven in unless you see something else. I, mean, I think you got to play position to the seven here to bump that 14 out. Even if you can see the seven, even if you can see the seven through here, I don't think now is the time to shoot it because you know, it doesn't free up your two or four. It's going to be 80s day today. I like it when they do the 80s music. They have a better 80s channel in here than Sirius has. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the 80s channel and the Sirius XM uh, radio. Yeah, me either. Every now and again I find a song and I'm like, oh cool, yeah, that's one I'll sit here and listen to. Okay, we're going to start with the one. Yeah, going to mm -hmm. try to get an angle on this 7, and he's got an angle on the 7 to bump this 14 out. Yes, he did. There's a two off that rail of just a tiny and not enough where you could, uh, I was wondering if he was clearing it out too for like a bank shot back at the uh, side, but I don't think so. Oh, he's overcut it. Uh, and this is sitting perfect for Eric. Yeah, it is. And now look at that 7-2 over there. Yeah. Solid's got all messed up, and stripes are nice and open. Nice mm -hmm. shot on the 14 to get started with. Even if you can't hear. Yeah, just take care of this 11 and 9. I think you... Probably got to shoot the 9 first. If you shoot the 11, I mean, that scratch off the 9 looks kind of ominous. So I think you kind of force to shoot the 9 first here. Yeah, and that's what he's doing. And he's undercut that one. Excuse me. All right, interesting shot he's looking at. I mean, if he, sh pockets the, if he shoots the 6-9 combination, he's going to be bumping that 4-ball into the 2-7, so it should break those open at the same time. Yeah, you just hope the 9-ball pulls your ball in with it when it goes, because it is sitting to uh, the left-hand side, the outside edge of the pocket. Now he was just looking at the billiard. But the combination opens up your balls. The billiard doesn't open up your balls. Yeah, but does it, uh, what good does the billiard do? Do you sell out something with the billiard? Mm. 
I mean, if you play the billiard, it's you called just, the bank, I think. I mean, yeah, if you play the billiard, it's you're just playing safe. If you're uh, playing the combination, you're you're trying to run out. I think he just. I swore he just pointed in that other corner pocket like he called the bank. That is not safe. No. No, you left him nice to be able to go from the 10 to the 11 to the 12. We're shooting in rotation this rack. Get that 10 out of the way. Go forward with it or backwards? Is the 8 in the way to go forward? Are you taking a chance of running into it if you go that 3 rail forward? Clipping the back side of it possibly and I'm getting funny. That's why I think I think I like coming backwards I mean, here. I don't mind shooting the eleven first and because I'm comfortable going back and forth to get from the ten to the twelve. Yeah, uh he caught that ball real full. And the reason is I don't like trying to play position off that ball from that distance because you know yeah. this can happen. You know, you can hit it off a little bit from that distance. Yeah, and he, he caught it full. And being so close in there to the corner pocket with that speed, it kind of killed a little bit. Well, he does have a look at this 11. And he spears it in. Spears it. For perfect. Where look at this going? shape. Look Just at this. Don't get behind it. Don't get behind it. Okay, that's perfect. Great shot, Eric. Yeah. Off the rail, just a little bit forward off the rail for the eight and the others, uh, the eight side across table from it. Punch it off the rail just a little bit. I had to be careful there too with how close he was having to bridge to the seven. If he bumps that seven and it hits the two, that's a foul. Absolutely right. All right. Eric taking the first game. one nothing in this final race to six. Let's have a look at that shot again. And uh, Dave Randall just told him, nice shot. And it was. He speared that ball in. Nicely done. So I read something interesting on the Western BCA Facebook page yesterday. Oh, well, if it was on Facebook, it's got to be true. Well, if you're looking for an unbiased... Um, evaluation of this predator table over here. Um, Linda Carter did one the other day that was actually a really good review of the table. Um, she looked at all kinds of different things that she um, had heard were different than the um, than the other tables and examined that and played you know on the table and what she thought about it. And so <clears throat> nice break. I'd go look at that and. Uh, if you can't be here and see what somebody and it, yeah, she wasn't, she did, she said, I don't care either way, one or the other. She just wanted to know, you know, for herself. And I thought it was a very unbiased uh, evaluation of the table. Eric MF and Sawyer with the shot of the match on that 11 ball says Chalkbox Productions. Well, it's only the first game. Yeah, plenty more match left. Yeah. The shot of the match so far. Well, and even out of, well, I don't know, that, that kick on the four of the last set for that Dave. Was pretty, that was pretty nice, too. All right, Dave taking stripes. So after that first set, did they say play for it all? Hmm. Back it and jack it. <laughs> Start over, double the bet.
the little emojis on screen don't match what was actually in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. All right, I think he's going to try to just nudge this five, loosen up that 15 a little. Got to be careful you don't make it worse, though. And he has not made it worse. He's made it better. Nice shot. I don't know if he can see the 15. He can see the 14 if he can't see the 15. Eight ball still in a little bit of a tight spot. It, it goes in multiple pockets, but positions uh, limited options. Right, swinging for it again here. <clears throat> Oh, I guess he can see the 15. Okay. Yeah, now you're shooting it. Slide on over. Oh, no. He's caught that five first. That's going to be a foul. Probably, probably start with this 3-4. Shoot the four up in the far corner. Or the three, whichever. Unless he wants to try to break him out with the five, in which case I'd be starting with the one to free up the eight ball. And and to make the one. <laughs> that too. Got to remember rule number one, make the ball. No. Well, I mean, just getting it out of there, having an opportunity to pocket it. It doesn't go past the, uh, the eight. Yeah, so he's going to start with this four three problem. Maybe his plan is to uh, get there from shoot it in the side. The one, the one does go in the side if you're not afraid of side pockets. Mm -hmm. Could attempt to get the short side of it too and shoot it in the opposite corner. Yeah, not not a fan of shooting a three right now because he's straight in on the three and he's going to have uh, kind of a tough shot next if he shoots yeah. this three. Oh, what if you follow down from the uh, five to try to get that one on the side? Yeah, I think he might have just enough angle to bring that cue ball out if he does shoot the five now. Nobody seems to have noticed yet that uh, Tyler is wearing his hat backwards. Or they just don't care. <clears throat> of course, the refs, I think, would care. Yeah, well, if they actually were, you know. <clears throat> it's a lot of rules and things to keep in your head while you're just scanning mm -hmm. the room and you know, looking. And <clears throat> I still remember the year I wasn't even playing and I was wearing like a halter top shirt. And it was a it was a nice one. It was dressy. I was dress pants with it and everything. And somebody went and complained that I wasn't in dress code. And I'm not even playing today. <laughs> and when the Western BCA wouldn't do anything about it, they went to the casino and complained. I'm like, how in the world am I supposed to concentrate with that girl's tattoo walking across the room? I don't know. But yeah, well, she's a player, and she yeah, I'm a player. But I wasn't even my division wasn't even playing that day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So it kind of makes me laugh when I see something that's, you know, right there in everybody's face. And nobody says anything about it. Well, Eric's picking his way through this rack, and he's doing a very nice job of it. Yeah, I think that last match uh, woke him up. I think so. 
Well, you've you know, awakened the beast. Yeah, you know what they say about you know the true double eliminations. Yep. You know, the first set favors the person coming through the beast side. Of course, that usually yeah. applies when you're because playing on the same day. The same day, yeah, yeah right. Dave was playing until whatever a.m. Mid- you know, midnight, yeah, midnight or something. Just about, yeah. Normally, <laughs> the first set favors the guy on the B side, and then the second set favors the guy that was in the hot seat. Yeah, here you would think it would favor, um, that first set would have favored Eric being that he was done early yeah, and nice gone and, and, nice and fresh, rested. Fresh and rested. Yeah. Maybe it's just taking him a little while to wake up. All he right. got too much sleep. Yeah. Wasn't ready to get up yet. All right, 2 nothing. Race to six and breaking. When you're in Seattle, be sure to check out Ox Billiards, Seattle's premier pool hall. Okay, Ken R says that as long as it's straight back and not off to the side, they're allowed to wear them like that. I know when you know when I was on the board and you know part of the Western BCA, you were not allowed to wear your hat backwards at all. So they must have laxed up on that rule a little bit. That that rings a bell. I seem to remember them saying you could wear it forward or backwards, but not sideways. I I'm, I'm that's that's ringing a bell. A oh, nice break. Break starting to work for Eric too. Last last set that his break wasn't working. I know he down that bathroom break. He went in and pulled a Conway and had a conversation with himself in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's another one I miss it now. Not that's not here. My buddy Jimmy Conway. Woo-hoo. <laughs> Never a doubt. Nice six-railer. It was only three. No, it wasn't. <laughs> yep. Only seven footers, seventy four of them. The one and only Bill Henderson. The OG for the Western BCA. One of the original founding members. Are they going to try to get an angle on this three to uh, maybe bump into that 15? Uh, well, well, I don't think that was the angle you were talking about, but uh, he may have it. <laughs> yeah, I think he does. A uh, full-fledged pirate hat is okay, but not a beanie. <laughs> oh, he's missed the three. All right. Brings Dave to the table. Does he have a look at that 13? Uh, was that just the tiniest bit of an overcut there? Yes, it was. Just the tiniest little bit. I think he might have a look at this 13. I'm looking at the table and oh, that's tight. 
It is really tight. It's he's very, got it. It's very tight, but I think he might have a shot at the 13. I'm looking at the table. I'm, I'm looking at it, too, and I think it, he would have to shoot it to the outside point, and it probably comes bouncing back at you the way it has been. It's looking at that 15 past the 1. Yeah, the 15 has a path, but he's so close to it, and he has to cut it a considerable amount. This is not an easy shot. Just tucked up on his cue a little here. If they took out tables, no, they need to put more tables in. They need, uh, they, they'd fit, they'd squeeze more in here. They'd put them even closer together if they could. On it to not show up for your match. Um, I don't. If my if my match is nine o'clock, if uh, nine o one, they're not there. I tell the ref, hey, my opponent's not here. Exactly, and that's what everybody should do. You don't get, oh, I don't want to put them on, and I'm going to give them. No, it's not your call. Yeah, they get fifteen minutes. Yeah, yeah they get fifteen minutes from the scheduled match time. Or as soon as that table is open. Yeah, not 45 minutes because they're still busy having breakfast. No, no, and you don't want to be the bad guy. It's not your call. Now when you take a break, it's supposed to be five minutes, not 10 or 15. That's why they say they are not allowing smoke breaks because you have to leave the building to smoke here, and that takes longer than five minutes, and they know it. I mean, I guess you could run down the stairs across the hall, which takes like 30 seconds to get out the building, take a couple puffs, and come running back up. Yeah, but no one's doing that. No, they're not. They're strolling. They're smokers. They're strolling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ain't no, no smokers running down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly not running back up the stairs. No. <laughs> Speaking of running, Dave's uh, running through this rack. Uh, well, maybe not running, maybe more like walking, but he's making his way through this rack quite nicely. Uh -huh. Of course, I say that. Uh -huh. and Blame it on Kevin, Dave. I thought he was just going to go back and forth for the 15 next. I didn't know he was going to draw it up table. And I don't know if he has a shot. No, I don't think he does. He has half a pocket, if that, for that 12 in the side. Yeah, I don't think it goes in the side. It might. You got a little better angle than I do to it. To... Yeah, I was looking at the table. He has half a pocket, if that. It's That's super tight. That's what he's looking at. Just stop right there. Oh, there you go. For the 10. He used all the room he had there. Yeah. All right. Good recovery, Dave. And here he's he's playing this off the rail. Hey. Is he, or is it off the, the three? Yeah, he's going off the rail off the three is what he was just lining up. Well, maybe it's slightly blocked and he has to. I couldn't imagine he's doing this without needing to do it. No, of course. Just, yeah, you know, he wanted to look cool. <laughs> yeah, I could have shot it straight in, but, but where's the fun in yeah, that? Yeah, anybody can st straight in. How boring. He's trying to make for some exciting television for us. He's, his sweat just went and put <laughs> his fingers in his water cup. I've never seen that before. <laughs> he's a character. <laughs> yeah, he is. Problems trying to figure out where to put his bridge hand. Yeah, one ball's uh, right in the spot he needs to be, right? It's okay. Can you mind if I move this one for a second while I shoot this shot? Well, as a matter of fact, I kind of do mind. Eight ball on the side. Coming up. No, going down. Oh. 
next on the chopping block. No. All right. Sorry, eight ball. You have been chopped. All right. Two one. Dave Randall on the scoreboard. Race to six. Yeah, when the team when the eight ball team starts, yeah, this place is super packed when the teams come in. I have four and five on each team. <clears throat> they play on two tables. So that's uh if they have five people per table at seventy four tables. And that's only the players. Hmm. And some some teams carry a sub. Right? Not everybody has just the minimum amount of players. Right. Plus, you know, people's spouses or their friends or, you know, whatever. And, yeah, that's a bunch of people in this room at one time. I say I walk through the, uh, go to walk through where, you know, the aisles there. But, and I don't care if I'm carrying anything or not. If you're trying to get through, hot coffee. <laughs> Parts like the Red Seas. If you just say, excuse me, they'll give you enough room where you got to rub up against them. I don't want to rub up against you. I don't know you like that. So, so hot coffee. Everybody moves. So, no, I wasn't carrying hot coffee. I was just looking for some. <laughs> I was just asking if you had some. No, no, yes. CompuSport is what is being used. You can find a link to the brackets at thewesternbca.org, or if you've got that CompuSport app on your phone, well, it's the 2023 Western BCA 8-Ball Championships. Next big event for Railbirds. Well, we got uh, a lot more Derby City matches to uh, to get through. Yeah, um, May um, trick shots. May we're going to Italy in May. Yeah, right after we come back from May, we have a trick shot event. Apparently, I'll be taking the entire month of May off from work. Yeah, well, at least we're going to Italy with your boss. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to drop. All right, brings Eric to the table with the big mess of uh, solids to, to deal with here. Yeah. Actually, I think if they want to keep uh, these tournaments on time, they should just outlaw second ball break. It's just say so you have to break head ball down the middle of the table. That's just the, that's the law. Well, and, um... That would speed up tournaments, I think. The other day there was an announcement made about how the refs were going to start, you know, looking for benchmarks and things like that and possibly adding games. That should be happening from round one. That's my opinion. Everybody should have the same standards put on them because now I'm penalized because your round took too long. It should be the same from the get-go. Benchmarks should be checked from day one.
Uh, I think the slate extenders are still on there from last night, uh, Joe. I don't think they ever took them off after last night's match. That must be what it is. Yeah, well, just a little bump safety there. Just trying to extend it out to maybe find something better or Hope that Dave Randall does something silly. I can't tell how deep he can get in there because he's standing in the way of the other view. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was going to come stand in the way of this one. Dave. That guy. Uh, miscue by Dave Randall there? Yeah, I heard it all the way over here. With a headset on and the music playing and... Yep. I'm going to make sure I'm uh, correct on this score on the other table. Alrighty. We'll be here. All right, opened up one of his clusters. That 3-2 combination go. Uh, that 12 might just have it covered up just a little too much. I don't know, if you, uh, if you shoot the six, drift over to the left a little bit near that foot spot, you can cut the five in and send the cue ball into that cluster and rearrange all the furniture. Now, these guys, they don't like, uh, they don't like <clears throat> rearranging the furniture. They like nipping and tucking and ducking and nudging. They don't like, uh, just blasting everything apart. Pots, right? Scores right too. Right. Nice little shot there by Eric. I don't think Dave has a shot to that fourteen. I don't think the I don't think the fourteen goes. Yeah, just clip the twelve pocket to do oh wait, that's the ten right there. And it's probably what he's going to do and just roll him up on the, let him sit on the three ball. Probably tying the seven up a little bit here too. Well, I don't want to leave Eric a shot on the three, because the three is kind of a tough ball to get on. Yeah, if you leave him on top of it. So I don't want to leave him a shot on the three. And he didn't get him on top of it. I would have been putting him on the ball. I guess he was trying to hook him from a shot on the five. I mean, the seven's got a couple holes it can bank at. 
Yeah, and unfortunately for Dave, he's also kind of tied up his stripes. Got 10, 12. Oh, the 12 might go. I mean, once once the seven's gone, that 12 might go. Yeah, but if the seven's gone, that means he's probably gotten out. <laughs> <laughs> To get the angle to go over there to maybe come in behind it? Or shoot this? I mean, I think he's got angles, the angle on both of these balls to head over to that at that seven. You cut the six yeah. in and go over there. You can cut, you know, go the five and swing around a couple rails and into the back of it. Yeah, I don't think this, I don't think going there from the six does much good. I think that I like the five better. Yeah. If you're, if you're going to go into it. He's going after the six here. I think maybe he's decided he's going to go for the bank on the seven. It just seems harder to get a shot on the seven if you go there from the six. Mm, well, I think he's going to have a... He's going to... The cut on this five is probably going to... Oh, that's waste. Uh, I, was, I just looked on screen. Yeah, no, that's a whole lot... Thicker, thinner cut, and I was looking at. So we're going for the bank on the seven here. We we're tied at three apiece on that other table. That was a gold singles. Is that a third place match? That's for, that is the third place match, semifinals. The finals will be up right after that is over. It's scheduled for noon. Oh, that's uh, quite oh, short. Oh, no. And this opens it up for Dave. Yeah, it does. Yeah, a choice of a couple of things you can start with. You can start with the 11. You can also start with that 15. I think he has a path to the 15 if that's what he wants. No, he also has a shot at the 12. Okay, so he has multiple options. I didn't know I didn't know he had a shot at the 12 also. Oh, maybe he didn't. I don't know. He's left him at 5, has he? He certainly has. That could be trouble for Dave. Yeah, just a little bit of draw anywhere in this bottom left quadrant of the table will be good, basically, for the seven, either in that upper right corner or in the right side pocket. Turn off your ringer. Yeah. It seems like if you roll forward, you're going to have a really thin cut on this eight to the side. Yeah, he didn't no, really care. Didn't. No, I didn't. No, it, it's, <clears throat> it didn't sit as bad as I thought. Well, it was pretty straight. I think Dave said that's good. Yep, Dave He's, said that's good. That is uh, surprising. <laughs> well, it's because where Dave is sitting, it probably looked it probably looked pretty straight in. Then more, it probably looked more straight in than it actually was. All right, Eric Sawyer up 3-1 in this final race to six.
All right, Kevin has had to uh, go for his uh, daily break here. So it's just me. And, uh, yeah, Bill Doherty, the uh, ref, just told him uh, no conceding match uh, games. Uh, they don't think it's a good look for the uh, stream. You're not supposed to do it anyhow. Um, there are rules that say it. No, no, no. Yeah, they, uh, it is supposed to be a penalty. I don't know if the BCA still has that rule, where if you concede a game, you lose that plus one off of your score. Um, Derby City has the rule. Um, I, it's whether or not people actually enforce it. Derby City also has the rule where two people aren't supposed to go negative in one pocket, but yet people don't use it. If uh, if it goes to where the second player is going to go negative balls, then you both gain a ball. And, you know, so the one guy would be, you know, you would have, you know, each one of you would lose that negative on you. <clears throat> And the coolest rule Derby has is the nine ball rule because it is winter break. If you break and run the set out on your opponent, they have the op they have the opportunity to do the same thing on you for the match to be over. So I think that's like one of the coolest rules of Derby. Although I've yet to see it happen or hear of it happening. All right, looks like uh, Eric's working his way through this wreck quite nicely. Everything's wide open. Not a whole lot of stuff to be worrying about here. The only thing he's got to worry about here is getting up to the six ball, because uh, that 14's kind of a big ball here for playing shape. Now, you'd like to be able to come back through there, but those three stripes are uh, can wreak havoc on you. And he's got there, he's handled it just fine, just, yeah, except that little bit short side, and you need to cut the ball anyhow and get down table. All right, Cindy Medina stopping by the booth to say hi. She came up uh, for a minute today. That is in. Oh, my goodness. 
that maybe just a little too hard there, I guess, did, did not fall. <laughs> He's just got this smirk on his face walking away like, well, what do you do? All right, what's uh, Dave Randall going to do here? Maybe pocket the uh, 5 with the 14, call the 14, but lay the uh, cue ball over behind the 12-11, uh, where you can shoot the 12 in the side afterwards, hooking them on the 8, in case that 14 doesn't follow it in. That Dave Randall, he's a smart guy. All right, so uh, wasn't sure what cue he was walking back over to grab. It looks like he's grabbed, uh, Eric's grabbed his playing cue and not a jump cue or a jump break or anything like that. We're going to kick this ball on the side. Uh, let's see, well, Dave, uh, I think she wants to start with this 13. No, oh, there we go. Happy birthday to you, Bill. Just uh, shoot this 12 in the side, a little bit of a pop stro stroke on it, just like that. How he get whatever he's more comfortable with here, 14 to the 10, 10 to the four, shoot the 10 to the 14. <clears throat> How comfortable are you at uh, shooting balls out of the hole? Um, position to the 8 is uh, crucial, of course. But I would look to see uh, him, yeah, he's shooting the 14 to the 10 in the side pocket, and then possibly the 8 in the other side pocket.
Yeah, we're at 4-3 over on the other table. <clears throat> Two guys battling to get to the finals. Yeah, that's a little bit funny spot there. I guess that's uh, he needs to follow forward for the eight and. Nice shot, nice shot. All right, Dave Randall. One more step closer. Ox Billiards, <clears throat> Seattle, Washington. Check them out. Uh, let's see, have we made a ball on the break here, Dave Randall? Looks like he has. He's pocketed a stripe. Looks like the... I think I like the solids here. And, uh, nine ten is kind of in trouble there with the uh, three ball hanging. All right, well, we're going to be uh, taking away the uh, pocket for the three here. Hopefully this 10 follows it in. Uh, 
Ah, uh, need to turn over one more time. All right, so <clears throat> the only thing he's got here is long, straight, pretty much straight in, I believe. Checked up over a ball out of the corner. So that means Eric will probably fire this in. Then we got uh, finals coming all morning and early afternoon. We will then get into your your team event later this afternoon. And when we get down to the team event, I was saying it played on two tables, so 9 and 10. So it'll be one match that we will be bringing you. Twelve. Oh, just... I just overcut it to the outside of the hole, and I'm looking right at the table. This two, the way it is married to the eight, I don't think it goes in the corner. It looks like it's just off to the back side of it a little bit. It does have the seven to be able to loosen it up a little bit. Could uh, actually go at it from cutting the six in right now. It looks like to me. Well, that's what I'm swinging at. If I'm Eric, I'm cutting the 6 in to try to run into that 8-2. Got to be careful because that 8 can pinch into the corner off of it. Oh, is it going to come up there? And All right, it goes. 2 now goes, but uh, I don't know what he's going to shoot at next. Oh, you're looking at back cutting this five here. Uh, no, it looks like he is shooting at the four. I look at that other camera. It looks like he's staring. Yep, was staring straight down the barrel at the four ball, and has got no love whatsoever. Well, let's see. What do we do now? 
too does bank cross side if and that's what he's uh that's what he's calling two ball cross side yep eric's looking to just win here and uh sometimes you know you got to be patient for the win you can't just force it All right, we are done on table number 10. Thomas Hale has eliminated Tyler Shields in third place. Thomas moving on to the finals, which will be coming up momentarily on the same table. Jose Galliana is the person that was waiting in the wings for that match. Uh, getting ready to be joined by Cliff Maxson. All right. Welcome in there, Cliff. How are you? I'm doing well this morning. How's the good. sound working good? Yep, coming through just fine. Awesome. So is this the third place match? This is this uh this here is the second set of the finals. Oh. I was way wrong. Yeah. Yep, and we're just getting ready to start the finals for the gold division over on the other table. We just finished up the match for third over there. Oh, very nice. So where did you end up? Uh, one in the money. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Okay, we won't. That, that's <laughs> we'll leave it. We'll just let it drop we'll, right there. We'll let it. We'll let like that a would go. Lead weight or something. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, but I would talk about it for. Yeah. Uh, Hours on end. <laughs> <laughs> right, and wait, so uh, Dave has to double dip. Um, well, this is the second set. The second yes. Set, oh. Yeah. So, um, and yes, um, Eric was on the point or the mm. hot, in the hot seat. So, Dave won the first set, and here we are with the here second. Yeah. Halfway through it already. Well, I'm a big fan of Dave. He's a good friend of mine. He is, he is a really nice guy. Yes. I I don't know him real well, but uh, it's, I've I've always had respect for the man. Mm -hmm. He played his. It was the first match that he had played over here. I don't remember what round it was, and he figured he had pushed through the ball. And he says, "Can you go back and that, check that yeah, against, it was against me?" Yeah. Yep, yep. And you know, and we went and looked at it, and it was you know I mm -hmm. gained more respect for the man on that because not Absolutely. everybody's going to do that because. No. It's not something where you expect a double hit the way the balls were set up on that shot, right? Yeah, yeah, and he was the only one who, like, I, I, I thought the key ball moved a little funny, but it didn't look that weird. Yeah. Um. Then he's like, I think I double hit that, and I was like, Oh, that kind of makes sense because I don't didn't think the key ball would should have gone forward the way it did. Yeah. And he asked you guys to take a. Yeah, and we did. Then you did. And yep, and yep, sure enough, he yep. pushed right through it. <laughs> All 
Eric at four two his break, I think. That's that's a cute clue, Sherry. <laughs> <It's a> score. <laughs> I'm trying to get the Fargo like, and everything so right. for this other table uh, over here. <laughs> lots of work up here. Yeah, especially when Kevin abandons me. <laughs> the lunchtime? Uh, he has a uh, damn phone call for work every uh, day, yeah. so leaves me up here. <laughs> it's all right, and then when he comes back, I abandon him. <laughs> Teamwork. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> what comes around comes around or something like that. <laughs> Don't forget to uh, check out our Fun Day sponsors. All these people put businesses, put money into the Fun Day events. Show them your support like they did you. Right on, that's uh, Dan Wolf's place now. Bought it, remodeled it. It's not a super dive bar anymore. It's a very good looking dive bar now. <laughs> Hey, dive bars are where it's at sometimes. Oh, of course. There ain't nothing wrong with a good local dive bar. It's usually where you find the best bar food, too. <laughs> good point. That's what it looks like. I don't see too many of those using the template rack. Yeah, yeah it, it's weird. Like, sometimes it works. Like, all the time. It seems like no matter what you do, a ball goes down. And sometimes, even if you hit it perfect, nothing goes down. Yeah, so it's been a uh, topic for debate the whole week, especially with summer. Um, oh, yeah. The uh, head ball or side break, uh, or, or the cut break. I've never been a big cut break fan. Yeah. Like stripes here, and I think that's what Dave's going for. Yeah, it looks like he's shooting at this 12 ball to start with. He wanted just a little bit of draw on that. Yeah. Uh, does he have the very edge of it? He's he must. squinting at it a little bit. <laughs> You know, when they drop yeah. down and they do the one eye squint, it you know it's really tight. Down I try to make a show out of all of them. <laughs> no matter if I'm perfect, I'll even I'll still do the oh god <laughs> drama. <laughs> exactly. It's like a little little mass a. Wow. Nice shot, Dave. Stays up. <laughs> I think that's quite what he was expecting. I think he was trying to... Uh, well, he's still got the 14 there. Yeah. Yeah, he's still got the 14. I think, I, think, I think he's looking pretty decent. Yeah. He's been playing so good this week, yeah. too. Yeah, he had a, a shoulder problem a couple months back. like, he, And he couldn't play for a while. And a couple weeks ago at League, he's like... Hey Cliff, I'm starting to hit the ball pretty good. <laughs> I'm like, get oh. Out oh, I'm like, get out of my bracket, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Why you gotta be in my bracket? I say that to people all the time. Stay out of my bracket. I mean, I didn't play him, so I can't really say anything. Yeah. All right, we're underway um, for the gold finals on the other table now. First rack has been broken. We've got. Uh, Jose Galliana coming is on the hot seat, must be beat twice, and Thomas High Thomas Hale just uh defeated um Tyler. Ty what it was no, uh, my brain just went name's gone. <clears throat> Are you playing teams? I'm playing teams. I'm playing with uh, David Wolf, John Scudder and Nicole Denisi. That's a uh, match Plat of platinum. Platinum team. We're like <laughs> four points under the cap or something. I was going to say, yeah, yeah, you're probably way up there close to it. That's a solid team. Solid team. I was glad to see, you know, as I know Dan, he wasn't doing, he started out doing those uh, 
for arguments and stuff, and we loved them. And then they would be, oh, well, all of my skateboard videos, you know, they just take up all my time. And so we're happy to see that he's uh, it, we, he's in pool now. We keep trying to convince him to do more for arguments, but yeah. he, he doesn't seem interested in anymore. So those were, you know, those were a lot of fun. Yeah. If you can go 10, I mean, it's tough. 10, 9, whatever that ball by the side pocket That's 13. is. 13. 13. And try to get straight on that ball on the rail. Oh, okay. The ball in front of the side pocket, I think, is the 15. Oh, so, 15. Yeah. yeah, the 10, the 9, the 15 to the 13, and then up onto yeah. the back side of the 14. Yeah, that's what I do, but I'm out of the tournament, so I don't know what I'm talking about. Right. I never even got to enter it, so. <laughs> <laughs> see what Dave's thinking. Uh, well, I don't think that was what he was thinking. The tables, have, so you know, the tables have slowed down, as you can see, mm -hmm. from what they were the last few days. They are uh, considerably slower. Yeah. And there's always that finals nerves and TV table nerves that come into play. Yeah. So uh, two rails out of this... Uh, bottom corner here to get on the 15 next in the side. Heard the ball here. That would give him a lot of leeway. He needs to bump this four. Oh, oh don't, no. don't get behind it. And he is, I mean, and I don't think there's hardly any room between the four and the cue ball there. He's right in on that rail. That is crazy. I'll just kick it in. He had a beautiful kick shot the first set. Mm -hmm. Called the, I believe, the 13 up in the corner. He's a favorite to hit a ball here. He's a favorite to make him. Yeah. Yeah, so we, uh, we got Scott Frost to do some remote commentary for that Platinum Singles Finals. At the yeah. house list. It was very cool. Yeah. Oh, Ooh, yeah. Ball in hand. Is it going to get in there and get funny, though? Look at that. Yeah, yeah that's just the way ball goes sometimes. Yeah. Yeah, we picked Scott up at uh, Derby City for our uh, for doing um, commentary and stuff. And mm -hmm. so we messaged him like, hey, you want to do, you know, the upper division, the finals? And he's like, sure. Yeah, his, his commentary was very insightful. It was it was nice, to, like, because he was actually talking about his, what his, he thought his patterns were, and um, I don't, know. yeah, no, it, it it was really good to hear someone of that caliber, like someone who plays world class yeah. eight ball. Yeah, and like, he, yeah, he need what, and he does. Yeah. Yeah, he's really happy. He's really liking doing the commentary. So you know, when I talk when I talk to him at Derby, he says, you know. Not in the prime of my game anymore. I'm just getting older. The you know the back hurts. The vision starts to go. So commentary is the next logical step, and it is getting to where a streamers can now pay some of these pros to do our commentary right. and not you know just trying to find somebody to come and do something for free or you know maybe get them in for a minute or two to you know so. Yeah, and yeah, for what I heard, it sounded like he was. But I mean, obviously, he's very knowledgeable. Yeah and knows what he's talking about. Um, but he was able to articulate it very well also, which is really cool. Though. Like, I, I like watching, like, top eight ball players explain their thought process yes, when they're true. looking at the table. And that I think that is, he, he did that well. Yeah, I'd love to get some of them, like they, um, what's the one um, stream that has Earl going and oh, uh, doing yeah. commentary on a bunch of stuff. And, you know, to get into their mind of what they would do, what what they were thinking when they're at the table mm. is huge. And we had JJ do one of his matches from the 2019 Derby, um, which was pretty cool. You know, why he was shooting, what he was shooting, and what he was thinking at the table. So yeah. We're we're gonna get Scott to do a couple of his matches too to get that inside of not just somebody else's game, but their game. Yeah, I I, I would watch the heck out of that. Yeah, that sounds, <laughs> that sounds cool. <laughs> Uh, back to this eight ball match. 
he going for the one? He's under the five here. I think he's going to have to go for the one. I mean, he does have the alley to hit the, to get the five. And Eric is not afraid to take a swing at a shot. He's been firing the length of the table shots in. And yeah. It's my first time seeing him play. I guess he's from uh, the Was from Washington. I think so. Yeah, I think Sam Rubito is staying with. He was. I think he said he runs one of the leagues up there. Okay. Yeah. I could be wrong. <laughs> Well, go for the five now. Is he going to run into the 14 to clear up the eight a little bit? Try to open it up that uh, gap a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. Yep. And on the three, that was a nice shot. Yeah, he's out from here. Just a little drawback. Yep. Boom, boom. No uh, pro commentary needed for this out. Yeah, I, no. I don't think. <laughs> no. Uh, it, it's pretty recreational, isn't it? Yeah. Elementary. Especially for these guys. Yeah, nice shot there. That's one of the things is like, you know, when I'm in a tense match or whatever, I tend to not hit that little draw shot as well. You know, like I either way overdo it or way underdo it. Yeah, it's either a stop shot or a draw on it the length of the table. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. <laughs> <laughs> but he's playing it perfect. Yes, he is. This one bore the hill. There it is. Clean shot on yep. the ball. On the bonus table, this guy's got a... Long straight in. Long straight in. Jacked up a little bit. Off of the rail and Off. over the 10. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, that's a fun shot. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> if you don't like, sure. If you, sure, if you don't like money. <laughs> it's a great shot if you're pissed at your wallet. Yeah, usually pissed away, partner. That's really, I made mine. Too. Yep. <laughs> well, Dave's not realizing the guy behind him is on the eight ball. I think he realizes Dave's standing behind him and is waiting. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, he, he wasn't going to take the chance of getting bumped. Oh, absolutely not. So when do you guys play? Um, the brackets aren't up yet. They aren't up yet. Yeah, uh, I think everyone has to get checked in first. And then, All right, yeah. Then they'll release them. But it's supposed to start tonight, right? Yeah. I think Platinum starts tomorrow morning. Because there's fewer teams. Yeah. And there is no elite teams. Platinum is the upper division, right? Platinum is the upper division. Yeah, there weren't enough elite teams to... So they were like, hey, all you elite teams find a 400 player to put on your team so you can play <laughs> and luckily um, um, Paul Marquez was like oh darn we don't we, no elite teams I need a, I need to find a qualified 400 player and yeah. I just whipped up all of the yeah, cause you can people at Sam's yeah. you know I was like oh these these are all these people, and he was like, oh, yeah, she's great. Yeah, let's pick up Nicole. <laughs> Nicole D. I think she's strong, a whole lot stronger than a 400-something. Oh, she's a 490. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they had to pick up a 402 or under oh, or something. Yeah, wow. Yeah. yeah, but there's... Their little I like that. Break going on. I like that uh, Fargo has done that. We, we watch. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a fa that's a that's a foul, Dave. <laughs> well, I guess Eric has uh, gone on a break, and uh, Dave just uh, in one ear and out the other. <laughs> Playing pool, smack. <laughs> Classic Dave. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> it's on video. <laughs> and he made a ball too, didn't he? He, he made a ball. <laughs> so now we're going to wait. <laughs> yeah, we got, uh, we got these two finals going on right now. Um, 
I think at 1.30 there's three of them that are scheduled to start now. Whether or not they're going to start on time, that's another story. Um, yeah, so. The only thing that would be holding them back now is just the length of the matches. Yeah. Because there are plenty of tables available. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And you do have uh, some of the second chances still going on out mm -hmm. here, too. And Yeah, even the, I think in the Platinum, like an hour and a half for a race of six was still a little short. That's tight, yeah. yeah. So 11 games at an hour and a half, and it's eight ball. It's now, eight ball. If it's nine ball, you know, seven, ten minutes a game, you know, that that's that's feasible. Yeah. And, I mean, even when you get down into the lower divisions, that can be feasible. Totally. But uh, for eight ball... It's just, it's but a total sometimes, different beast. Sometimes those games, like, I don't know. Is he playing this 1-9? I think he's playing the one The 3 does make it a lot bigger, doesn't it? Oh. Oh, but you got to get it turned over. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I guess because that 13 looks like it just has enough room to go. Yeah. Which is why he was electing for the stripes there. You could throw it in there if you're going to shape. Still tough. So, so, I guess Eric's probably going to opt for the stripes as well. He's probably looking at trying to solve a problem here, if he can. The 15 kind of got weird on that shot. If I was playing randoms at the bar, I'd probably just jack up and draw it straight into the 15 right here. Yeah. Yeah. you start with the 12? Okay. Oh, that's that's a. I think I think that's a good starting ball. I'd I'd like you'd like to be able to get at that fifteen. Yeah. You know, the fifteen is a problem here. Yeah, and and. He's called uh, the six. Does he? And he. I, Wonder if he realizes because he wasn't here that if it's open. But I mean, he should because Dave shot the you know a a, a stripe into a solid. Yeah, he just he's decided he likes these solids better. Left himself a nice angle here. He might be able to push at the ten here and have it just clip a little bit and on that back side of the four to this other corner pocket. It'll be interesting if he can, but uh, yeah, yeah th looking at this other, the other angle here, it looks like he's got too much angle to be able to go and, you know, hoping for a shot on the uh, four next. Yeah, I think taking, yeah, I think taking solids there was maybe a mistake, yeah. but. You can get to the one here to maybe get up table to the back side of the four. No. Yeah, that four is, is a huge problem. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and then you got the seven that's only got, you know, maybe one pocket that it can go to. One pocket that's yeah. uh, blocked, but, or your shape is blocked by the eight ball. <laughs> yeah. But, hey, I've seen people get out from worse. Looks like he is trying to slide up under it, maybe. Oh, oh he was going for the breakout. Yeah. The breakout like that really would have worked out very oh, well. It was going to push the 13 to the rail and probably back right down in front of it, right? Coming yeah. at it that angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't want to come at that four from the top side. You want to be coming at it from the, you know, from the side rail. and. Yeah, pushing it towards the other pocket or something. But, eh? Mm 
that's where I don't know, like the pros play just such perfect shape that they can run out from everywhere, you know, and then yeah. us mere mortals have to play a totally different game. Oh, oh, he almost made it. Oh, 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 that was that was a pretty sporty shot he tried there. Yeah, a bit crafty. Yeah, I like it a lot. Uh, it's one of the best sets of eight ball that I have ever seen. Was Rodney Morris. God, I think he was playing Frosty. I'm trying to remember who he was playing. But it was like at the bar box. And it was alternating break. And Rodney breaks, run out. The other guy breaks, makes a ball or doesn't. Rodney runs out. The other guy breaks, makes a ball. Yeah, Rodney breaks, runs out. It was like that. It was yeah. like, you know, a race to nine was all of like 11 innings when it's <laughs> alternating break. Right. And I mean, that is just so unheard of yeah. at that level. But, yeah. And I think it was Scott Frost he was playing. Yeah, I think there's one of the U.S. Bar Table Championship videos. And I think it was Sky versus uh, Appleton. And it was whoever won the flip won the set. Because they've just broken right in everything. It's just like... So that's one thing I like. I was talking about it earlier about the Derby City. They have that nine ball rule that because it's it's winter break. If your part, if your opponent breaks and runs the set on you, uh -huh. you have the opportunity to do the same, and then it goes to like a you know sudden death shootout for one game, yeah. which I think is cool, you know, because you, it is possible that you never get to the table, right? Yeah. And they're the only tournament that does that. I, don't I think that's that's a fair fair rule. Like, what other what other sport do you play where if you win, like? you get the advantage again. You know? yeah. Like in basketball, you make a basket, you don't get the ball back. Yeah, right. It goes to the other guy. Yeah. Right. Yeah, no. And it's, you know, what, a, what other sport can you compete and never get to compete? Exactly. Yeah, right. <laughs> you just sit there in your chair. You don't even have to go up to the table to rack anymore. Just get up and shake your hand. And yeah. Say, nice game, right? <laughs> Kevin, be like, you ready to start? <laughs> <laughs> a nice warm-up yeah. for you there. <laughs> Flip a leg. That guy. Doesn't want to move the first. Yeah, I swore he called, like, the back cut on just 11, but I don't know that it I mean, does it go up in the corner? I don't think so. He comes up with some pretty crafty stuff. Oh. What about banking the 10 at the 9 here? I like that. Oh, that's a cool shot. That's, I mean, smart shot. Yeah, it's played straight pool for years and years and years. So he's, he's uh, very smart about like I think street pool and eight ball, or bar, especially bar table eight ball, have a lot of uh, those little movements that you need. They coincide. So I expect Dave to come up with a, a clever shot here. I guess it did happen. I've never seen it happen or hear of it happening at, uh, but I guess. Uh... It happened to Pavlova versus SVB at Derby. Okay. Oh. That's uh, Tyler Steyer's wife. Margaret Pavlova Steyer. Pavlova Steyer? Yeah. Well, they got married a year or so ago. Does he have an angle on this five ball? Or is he straight in? Well, let's see. Uh, he's got angle on it. Yeah, yeah, all kinds of angle. Me, I'm running into this four ball right now. Yeah, now when you've got the angle to go over there, absolutely. Uh, I, and you want to hit, you want to hit the four off of the head rail and not like clip it off of the side rail so that you're maybe going into it full, so it comes around the ten. That's exactly what I would do. I would, yeah. I would hit it full and then just lock up right on it, and then be like, "Why did I do that?" <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because if you if you come off of it off of the uh, side rail and it's it's just gonna thin it now, you're, now that does you no good. Mm 
Hey, he's right. keeping it. He's trying yeah, to get he's, over there. He's a little aggressive here. Oh. Come on. There. Come on. Uh, yeah. A good, good attempt. Yeah, no reward. No reward, but strong, strong attempt. Yeah, now uh, how do we go at it here? Again, you know, the nine's got the four blocked. Yeah. The seven has got minimal pockets. The three is actually just about on the point. Yeah, and the bank's blocked. Oof, yeah, this is a tough situation. That's why, you know, my initial run into the ball was, you know, yeah, that's going to happen. He's looking aggressive again. I think he's trying to go for something. Okay, guys, who do I need to kick out? Let me know. Ooh. Almost broke that seven out nicely. Not a lot of options I'm seeing though. Yeah, no, they're even if you try to bank the four into the nine, you'd have to bank the seven. And that's that's asking too much. But you don't have anything else. Like there there's no safe on this table. Dave's got balls in front of three pockets. So I think you gotta go for something. Alright, I am on it guys, getting rid of them. Thanks, Zach. I didn't see if he called anything. See when he's trying to bank the four to the nine, or was he? Ooh. Yeah, well, got Dave Randall another opportunity to yeah. keep this match going. Yeah, his only problem is the fifteen ball. He's got to shoot it right where he's standing right now. And the initial shot is fun because, I mean, it's Dave. He knows what he's doing. But even a lot of players at Dave's level don't know how to shoot ball and jaws like this. Well, well, and it looks like Dave doesn't know how to do it. <laughs> I can say that. I'm his friend. Yeah, he left himself weird here. I think you just drop this in dead weight. How do you? Oh, oh, he hit that good. Yeah, hit that ball did. real good. Yeah, it did. A uh, little flat on this 10, but he does have angle to, that he can work with. Yeah, I think that's right Right in Dave's wheelhouse is using, using a center ball power shot to get shape on this next ball here. Yeah. Yeah. That should be fine. The only tester in the rack is right here. Oh, 
Is he not shooting? Oh, he's not shooting it. Yeah. No, and he's... I just touched us in the side, I guess. Yeah, what's he doing with or 15, is... though? Yeah, I don't know. I think you got you got to go for it here. Yeah. Come on, Dave. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, nope, yep, <laughs> nope, nope, yep, yep, nope. <laughs> <laughs> just back and forth, huh? <laughs> Got something else in mind. Ooh. Oh, Dave. Oh, That's a foul. It's gonna That's a loss of match, match right there. Dave, yeah, there shoot the, the 15 ball, Dave. There goes the title. <laughs> yeah. yeah oh, he's, ball he's, he's laughing at himself right now. Yeah, he is. He's probably tired as can be, to, you know. Oh, absolutely. And you, yeah, you got to start here with the seven up in the corner. <laughs> up in the corner. Nice little draw. Right. Yeah, you can play it in the corner. You draw it in the side, whatever yeah. you're more comfortable with. It really comes down to not where you're comfortable at shooting the four, but how you're comfortable at shooting the seven here, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, so he likes the side better. And he likes to put a little bit of draw in Eric. Yeah, he absolutely nice. likes to stroke it, stroke the shots. Yeah, you can see right there when he got down on that, he's feeling it. He knows this is his. I bet that feels nice. Oh, it does. But yeah, make sure you get that ball in first and then celebrate. <laughs> keep, you got to try to keep that under control. There you go. Oh, nice win for Eric. Nice win, Eric. Congratulations to Dave Randall on your second place finish in your 2023 Platinum Single Eight Ball Championship. Eric Sawyer. Congrats, Eric. Congrats. Thank you, Sherry, for yeah. having me. Thanks for coming in, Cliff. I'm Sherry Ross with Cliff Maxson. Thanks, y'all, for joining us. We'll be back shortly with another match. Stay tuned.